Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at part of the College Football 25 Dynasty Deep Dive here on College Football 25. This top part, basically useless. You can take a look at the trailer here if you'd like. Building a dynasty, basically they came up with three core pillars. It's build your coach, build your program, and deliver the world of college football. Well, building your coach means you have the basically the customizable and you're able to go on different paths with your coach. So you're able to start as a coordinator at a small school before making a name for yourself and getting that first head coaching job or starting as a head coach at your dream school. Every decision you know that you make on your journey matters. Building your program, as the old saying goes, to win in college football, it's not the X's and O's, it's the Jimmy and Joe's. So basically, it's just saying that recruiting is the lifeblood and controlling and building your roster is the most important part whether that's using the portal or high school recruiting. And then the world of college football, it's not just about the environments of the teams. It's also about having other aspects like the 12-team college football playoff. And they provide the fat tools to be able to make your dynasty pretty customizable, which is really cool. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this screenshot. I like this right here. The home screen or the, I believe it's URI as they call it, is really nice. This user interface looks really cool. I think it's going to be very nice when we get into the game. This is green, I'm guessing, because your coach is Colorado State, as you can see right here. So I think this is pretty cool. Now let's talk a little bit about building your coach. The journey to the top of the college football world starts with your coach who wanted this meaning. We wanted this to be meaningful and allow you the experience, the coaching journey that no other sport can provide. They met with different coaches and all that, and they talk about that in here. And they basically came up with three different types of coaches, pretty much. What they learned is not every coach is good at everything. So basically, that's highlighted right here, which makes a ton of sense. Even the best coaches, like you look right here, they mentioned 2013 Alabama. You know, they needed a, basically a new offense in order to revolutionize their game and to update it. So... It just tells you that you're going to need every aspect of your program to be the best possible. And you can't be the best at one, like everything, like you couldn't college football revamped and college football 14. So they wanted it just like the real world. No coach would be good at everything. Check. A rock, paper, scissors relationship between coach types with no dominant progression path. That's interesting. I really like that. And coordinators and matter basically so the way you build your staff out with your coordinators as a head coach is going to matter taking a look at some of your coach progression basically there's a ton of different ways to be able to earn xp that's what this is talking about here um you can use them to upgrade your coach's abilities they'll talk about that later you have draft basically gameplay recruiting and stats all these will be, be able to give you varying amounts of points to add into your XP and to make yourself a better coach to be able to unlock more paths on your, basically your coaching tree. And the number of times you've completed a goal will all be tracked, which is really cool as you can see on this screen here. So like times completed is 198 times they've had a first down. Uh, pass deflections, 19. Rushing touchdowns, 16. So that's pretty cool. And you can see right here is your experience, your reward for each one. So I think that's really interesting. I like the way they did that. Each time you complete an in-game goal, you'll get a notification here in the top left corner, which is really cool. So you'll have an idea in-game what you were able to accomplish. I like the bar with the RPG. Like, it's really cool, and I think that's going to look nice. It's clean. It's neat. You'll probably see it after games like what you used to in NCAA 14. Now, there's a bunch of different coach archetypes. Basically, it's three but they can merge together and build your own path forward, basically. And it seems really interesting, guys. And I think that it's going to be able to create a lot of different paths for people to be able to follow. Of course, naturally, my concern is that there's going to be one path that's just going to be overpowered. And that's the one everybody follows. We'll have to see, though. There's really no way to know until we get into it exactly how that's going to end up playing out. Just like our real-life coaches, you know, the base archetypes fall into three categories. Recruiting, motivation, think you're player development your program culture and scheme which is your x's and o's so basically you're going to choose one of them personally i think recruiting is going to be the best and motivation that's just a personal opinion though i like to develop players and recruit them so to me that would make the most sense now your base archetype you can progress it in multiple ways and become an expert in a single category like recruiting and you can become an elite recruiter which will open up other avenues for you so like you get more recruiting points each week and stuff like that that's really cool they did a great job with that and it'll allow you to really excel on the recruiting trail and be able to build an elite program. Or you can become a hybrid coach where you're strong in multiple areas, like I was talking about, 
where you can become a t- talent evaluator who's also great at recruiting. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to max both of them out. That's something I'm really curious about, and I hope to be able to find out when I get in there. And one of the things I want to test and see, that's what that's telling you here. And you'll be able to become a program builder or a CEO based upon which way you go, which is basically the top of the line, which means you're good at two things. You're considered an elite coach. So I'm really curious to see how that goes and, like, what kind of impact that has. Like, well, I, they mentioned later on in here, like, programs – Elite programs want program builders and CEO types. Well, how long does it take you to be able to achieve that? That's one of my questions. And basically, if you do achieve it, does that unlock every one of them jobs? Or is it still going to be catered a little bit to like, well, this program where they mentioned only wants this type of coach? Or will the elite programs be like, you know what? We don't care. We'll take either a program builder or a CEO. Or is it going to be like Ohio State's looking for a program builder while Alabama's looking for a CEO? I'm really curious how that plays out and like kind of what the give and take is there. There are 11 different archetypes. In total, there are 11 different archetypes that you can focus on, which is really cool. That's quite a bit. It's a rock, paper, scissors relationship. There's no dominant archetype, they say, and I really hope that remains true. While there's no doubt that talent acquisition is the most important thing in college football, focusing solely on recruiting could lead you basically to be weaker in other areas because you can't be great at everything, so you have to really be good with your priorities and how you build out your coach now you can be a great recruiter and count on your assistant coaches to be able to be the ones who are giving you all the other benefits basically and i'm really curious how that works and also i like the fact that there is no being able to respect your coach what you do is what you are and that's who you're stuck being so you better choose the right one like i said i'm probably starting recruiter because to me that's probably the most important part of being a elite program builder in my opinion So how do you upgrade it? And basically, now, like I said, they have prerequisites, which is really cool. So in order to become an elite recruiter, you must spend 50 coach points in the recruiting archetype and sign two top five classes. That's really cool. Once these goals are complete, the archetype becomes available for purchase with coach points. When creating your coach, you will select the base archetype you want to start with. The other two base archetypes then will appear as available for purchase with coach points without the need to meet any additional requirements. So I'm curious how that works out. You have to earn your way to the top of your one, but how does that work exactly? Is it once you max out your base archetype, like you're able to then purchase them? Or how does that work? I'm curious about that. Um, It unlocks a new set of abilities as well as the new opportunities in the coaching carousel. Because, like I said, each program basically has what they're looking for in a coach. So you may not be able to get a job you want because you don't match what the program's looking for. So that's really an interesting aspect that I'm curious to see how much that matters. Each archetype has a perk when it is active. For example, a tactician has the winner perk, which awards additional XP every time you win a game to your players. That's incredible. Your active archetype is automatically determined. Basically, that just means whatever you have the most points spent in, that's what your active archetype is going to end up being. So if you own the program builder or CEO archetypes, they'll always be your active archetype regardless of how many points you spend elsewhere. So your progress can be viewed within the coachability screen. And I got to say, the coachability screen actually looks really clean, really neat, and I like it a lot. I think they did a great job with that. So how do the abilities work? Well, that's going to be an interesting aspect of how much it, it affects the game as well. And they are introducing more than 50 coaching abilities. Each ability can have up to four tiers. Every tier has a purchase cost associated with it. So basically, it's going to cost you 50 points to buy tier 100, tier 2, 200, tier 3, 400, 300, tier 4. I don't know. That's just like a basic thing, though. It's going to cost you to be able to level up your coach, which makes a ton of sense. And then you will no longer be able to, you will no longer be able to be great at everything when it comes to recruiting as well, which is a really cool aspect. So, like for me, I'm going to specialize in quarterbacks. I always want to be able to get a good quarterback because I feel like a quarterback gives you the best chance. So, in my dynasty that I'm going to run on this channel here, if you're interested, I'm planning on doing a team builder dynasty. Now, the thing is, we may not stay with that team builder forever. Depending upon how it goes, we may decide to move on to another program and start building somebody else. We'll see. But it's definitely going to be a team builder for a little while until we build them up. And if we build them up real quick and get into the championship, win it all in the SEC, maybe we move on. We'll see. Stay within the same dynasty world. I'm definitely interested in doing that in the future. But I definitely want to be a quarterback whisperer. I think that's going to make the most sense. Or you could be great in the trenches, which will also have a lot of perks because O-line really does matter as well. 
So in addition to position-based boost, there are also coach abilities with core gameplay effects, which is really cool. So the scheme guru archetype focuses on your gameplay style. If you're a coach who likes to play fast, you can upgrade fast tempo offenses, providing you the following boost. Tier 1s, they basically fatigue slower. Tier 2, they increase delay of defenders looking to the sideline at the snap. Tier 3, team composure boost on first downs. And Tier 4, chance to see the defense's coverage shell and hurry up. That would be really interesting. You can also be your team a well-oiled machine who doesn't work against themselves and is unfazed by rowdy home field crowds, which would be probably the better one if you're asking me, honestly. Because I think home field advantage is really going to matter. But it's the same idea in here. It'll basically, as you go down the list, it gets better. So you're going to have a better perk for purchasing it. So, of course, as they say, all offensive style abilities, there's a defensive style and ability to counter it to equal it out. So, basically, the better team you play, the more likely that your boost isn't really going to matter, I guess, is the way I look at it. I don't know. All the other boosts are available for the offensive and defensive coordinator, but the program builder and CEO, that's specific only to head coaches. And that makes sense because you can't be a CEO if you're a offensive coordinator i mean that's just not how it works so looking at coaching abilities you can see this screen here you can see this guy has the halfback fullback running game boost here that's pretty cool and always be recruiting it increases your weekly recruiting hours for running backs specifically so that's pretty cool and i would ex love to have that for quarterbacks so i think this is going to be really cool and i'm excited to see how deep it is so what about coordinators well coordinators are going to be critical to this basically what this is telling you is your offensive and defensive coordinators are going to be able to use to fill in the skill gap like his weaknesses so for example if your head coach is weak at recruiting you can hire an offensive coordinator who's good at recruiting and it's going to allow you to balance your team out a little bit better now there are certain abilities that like if owned as a like if you're a defensive coordinator and you have an offensive boost you're not going to be able to utilize that it's not going to have much of an impact because you're coaching the defensive side of the ball now as a head coach that will have more of an impact so it's one of the things you have to be able to balance out for the long haul um, you can review all of their abilities and all that using L1, R1, or right bumper, left bumper, whatever system you play on. And pressing R3, it'll overlay them all so you can see how you're doing as a whole unit. So that's really cool, and I love that you were able to do that. I think that's going to give you a good idea of how your team's doing. So this also starts to talk about basically coaching carousel. Now, I love the way they did coaching carousel in here. There's going to be like five different weeks where you are able to move up and accept other jobs. And when it comes to contracts, they automatically re-sign you to a contract. So if your contract expires, instead of having to go through the carousel, they're just going to extend you as long as you're not fired. But the good news is you'll be able to still accept another job in the meantime. It doesn't force you into staying with that team just because your contract expired. So that's really cool. And they make sure that you don't have, like I said, the process of your guys getting stolen away for the same job or a worse job basically for no reason. So I'm pretty happy with this i think they did a good job and i think all the you know the contract expectations are basically what you'd expect them to be there right here different ideas so that makes sense your job security fluctuates same as what it did in the other games if you played it before you can be a plus to f on your coach prestige now the really awesome thing is every win and loss counts towards that expectation of your job security which makes you know sense all that in order to get a powerhouse job you won't be able to be like a c tier coach is what it says throughout this i'm not reading every word i am paraphrasing it because most of you guys have probably read it and are just looking for my input or my thoughts or just more thoughts on it or seeing it again so at the end of your contract the school will evaluate and if they want to extend you they extend you that's what it says in this paragraph basically and you'll be able to still change jobs if you want and i do think they did a good thing by bringing back this screen here you'll be able to view 20 years into the past for your coaching records and it should have everything that your team won whether it be your bowl game a national championship conference championship all that stuff should be in there so you can see what your program did in the past and that'll also help inform you when it makes a decision on whether to go to that program as well. Now, coaching carousel, I already talked a little bit about this, but it works kind of how you'd expect. Better schools are not going to hire worse coaches, and they did a better job of really representing how the coaching carousel actually works. So when LSU and USC hired away Lincoln Riley and Brian Kelly, and it screwed up the entire hiring cycle in 2021, 2022, that can happen now in the game because instead of it just going linear where it's one coach at a time, each week, every program is going to fill their job and then all the other jobs come open so it offers opportunities for the next week and it's going to keep trickling down and filtering like that, which is something that I think they did a fantastic job at and I can't wait to see how it works 
And I think that at the end of the day, they just did such a good thing with this. And it sounds like they upgraded and they didn't regress at all, which is very important to me. Um, I wanted to see them build upon this game and not go back to a base model. And it seems like even though they couldn't use anything from NCAA 14, they were able to take all that and build upon it still. So they did a really good job there. So the other cool aspect here is, you know, you can see their preferences, all that, what they're looking for. But when you take a new job, you stay at your program until the off season. So you can finish your playoff run, play your bowl game. But if you become a head coach, you'll be able to still hire your coordinators and all that while coordinating your old team. So that's really cool. And that's an awesome step that they did. I love that they added that little bit of realism in there where you can still build your team how you want it, but you get to finish out your challenge of your current season. And the other cool thing that's kind of underrated is if for some reason you don't take a job, you will automatically be assigned a job. So that way your dynasty doesn't just end there. And then they have a bunch of different ways to tell you this is how basically they decide who to hire. And when it comes to your coordinators, they're also going to give you a list of who they think that you should go after and who fits what you're looking for and all that. So it just tells you like archetype matters, scheme, level, coach prestige, all that makes a ton of sense. Nothing there that really, I don't think you guys don't understand. Now the domino effect, that's what I was talking about, where each decision impacts the next round of hiring. So Memphis fills their head coaching job with Jay Anderson here, an architect head coach from Oregon State. Well, now Oregon State's going to be looking for a new head coach in the next round. So it's really cool to see how that works out. We're going to go ahead and take a look at next picture. You can see Ole Miss here. They're likely going to hire Ratliff, a head coach from, I can't tell the university there, but, and then in the next round, you can see this was all the current openings for any coach. And I think these bars underneath are how well you fit the program. I could be wrong on that. That's just a guess. And then this right here is just your basic staff moves. I'm really curious what happens when a guy goes to the NFL. Is that just the end of them and they disappear from the thing or can they come back in the future? Because that's kind of anticlimactic if you're like, if I get to build out my coaching staff, I don't want to see my coach go to the NFL, for example, in my team builder team. So if I get to choose who I want to be my offensive and defensive coordinators, and then they just go to the NFL, that's kind of lame and they disappear. I want to see them stay in college and how their careers progress. Really curious about that. Now, one downfall is you can only fire your assistant coaches, your offensive and defensive coordinators in one stage which does suck. That's a little bit limiting. I wish you would be able to do it more throughout the off season. It's the off season. It's time to change. I feel like you should always be able to do it during the off season, but it is what it is. Um, and this tells you basically how it all works. You know, once their contract expires, it's automatically renewed unless you decide to fire them, so on and so forth. And then starting bowl week one, you can hire new coordinators to an open position. Once you hire a coordinator, it'll give you a preset. This is where I was talking about, like the curated list of candidates who they recommend using the AI that the computer uses to hire their coaching staffs. So when you offer a coach, it's no guarantee that they're going to take the job and you only get to offer one job or one coach per cycle, basically. So each week, if you're looking for a DC, you can only offer one DC each week and see if he takes it. And hopefully he does or else you're going on to the next round and looking at that new pool of candidates there. So that's pretty cool and interesting. You can see here, Danny White, DC. It's just showing off how it's going to look. They offered him. He's from Ball State. This is obviously an Oregon State staff. We're trying to see what Jackson Anderson can hire and who he's offered. It's pending, so we're going to see if they take him, I guess. And basically, that's where I'm going to leave this off here, guys. I want to thank you for watching. I love doing little videos like this, and this is my quick snapshot. You guys can pause it and read it all. I'm sure most of you have already read it all, but I'm really excited. I think they went deep with these offensive and defensive coaches the head coach I think the trees are going to be really cool and I think it's really going to make an impact on the game and on the teams as a whole within the game and I think it's going to give them a little bit of a different feel as you play your dynasty each team can be different and that's exciting I really look forward to seeing how this plays out we're less than two weeks away now guys I know we're all pumped if you guys want to see more dynasty content or you want to see more college football content Stick around on my channel, considering dropping a like and subscribing. I'm going to be back to finish off this over the next few days. There's no point in trying to put it all in one video. I want to thank you for watching, though. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day, and I'm out.